So today we are going to try and consciously create a routine that will work for you. The goal for this is not to have an aesthetic pleasing routine. The goal for this is to have a routine that actually helps you level up. I'm a huge believer in a good day starts at night. So a good mo morning routine is actually backed up by an even better evening routine. After work, what are the things that you do when you get home? How do you decompress how do you even plan for success for the next day the foundation is on your routine create a routine that is sustainable we are on episode nine i've been cranking out these episodes like rent is due i'm very proud of myself i'm just gonna put that out of the way i am gonna piggyback from episode eight in case you guys missed it i feel like that's a good foundation we spoke about how to build a routine that actually works a routine encompasses a lot of things and one among those things i had touched a little bit was the daily habits so today i'm gonna go a bit into detail to talk to you guys about the daily habits that help you to be more productive all right all right so i'll cue in the intro and let's get this part started oh hi friends you're listening to the journey your guide to becoming your best self and i'm your host kimmy lately there are two ways to go about this if you're looking to build daily habits that actually work the first thing that you need is to have a routine of sort every human being has a routine some people might have a routine but they're not aware of so today we are going to try and consciously create a routine that will work for you some people just wake up jump on their phone scroll for an hour or they hear the alarm go off and then they snooze four times and then roll on the bed be on instagram for a while that's a routine it's destructive, but still a routine. So for the ones that are looking to level up, the first thing that we need to do is actually to create a productive routine. A productive routine is broken down into two things. So you have your morning routine and then you have your evening routine. And most people love to focus on the morning routine. Like if you go on YouTube right now, just look productive routine like my nine to five or my morning routine for a healthy something, something. A student's morning routine. There's a lot of morning routine that people have created on the internet. The goal for this is not to have an aesthetic pleasing routine the goal for this is to have a routine that actually helps you level up it's not about lighting up the candle having a green matcha or wearing your lululemon set and going for like a yoga stretch or going to pilates i mean if you can afford it that's fine but that's not the do it all for a morning routine a morning routine is supposed to work on your favor. An easy morning routine could be waking up at a certain hour. So if you're waking up at 6, fine. If you're waking up at 7, fine. If you're waking up at 8, it has to work for you. It's not a routine that you saw your favorite influencer or a content creator doing it and then you started doing it. Find a time that you are going to be able to commit to wake up continuously for like 3 months and then your body is going to build into that. If you're a student, your morning routine would look different. If you are working from a nine to five, it might look somewhat similar to me. If you, you're more active at night, your routine would look different. Just find a routine that works for you and then build onto that. I'm a huge believer in a good day starts at night. So a good morning routine is actually backed up by an even better evening routine. After work, what are the things that you do when you get home? How do you decompress how do you even plan for success for the next day if i come back from work let's say i'll go for a walk with my partner and my dog hang out cook together well not cook together tea will cook and then i'll just chill and talk about the day what he's been up to what i've been up to i'll have a glass of wine and then from there we'll probably watch one of the series we're watching after that shower do my evening skincare routine and then try and be in bed around 9 30 on a good day if you're trying to be super productive we'll both jump into whatever we are reading for the night and then we sleep if i manage to sleep between 10 and 10 30 by 6 my mind is already like you know you've had enough you can wake up and i love that for me so that's just a look on my evening routine it's not always constant but there are things that i have to do so for a morning routine things that i have to do is move my body it's not becoming like a cult i have to go to the gym i have to run on wednesday and friday those are just the negotiables i told myself that i'm doing for 2024 and i see the change my body feels so much better my coffee intake has gone really low i have so much dopamine energy in the morning the foundation is on your routine what does your morning routine look like what does your evening routine look like and then start small 
try waking up early for a bit and then try adding in movement you don't have to jump into like uh one hour and 30 minutes in the gym you can start small you can go for a 20 minutes walk you can go for a 10 minutes mindful walk just start small and then build from there back in 2019 i don't know what had possessed me granted i was single maybe i was stressed or i had a lot of sex hormones suppressed I have no idea, but I would just go to work and then after work run 15 kilometers every day. How I did that, I have no idea. And then over the weekend, I will just run like a 21 kilometer. And then COVID happened and whatever, I had to start from scratch. When I go back to the road this year, the first one kilometer almost wiped me out. So I slowly built from one kilometer to three kilometers. And right now I'm doing five kilometers and I want to maintain that for a few then build it into seven kilometers, then build it into 10 kilometers. And that's one thing that has also helped me, you know, be more consistent at the gym. I'm not training to lose weight. I'm looking to look cleaner, sexier, delicious, but that's not the goal. They don't go there and like obsess over the numbers, over the calories and whatnot. I'm looking for something that is sustainable. Create a routine that is sustainable. If you try and emu emulate my routine to your life, we are two different people. We are driven by two different things. So it will not necessarily work for you. A sub point to that, which I've actually gone into details already is move your body. Find time between your morning routine or your evening routine to move your body. Moving your body doesn't necessarily always mean lifting. Go for a walk. Try and close the 10 steps a day challenge. Move your body like walk, swim, run, hike, jump, dance, break a sweat. However, you seem fit. If you're a Pilates girl, go to Pilates. If you're a gym girl, go to the gym. If you're a runner, run. If you're a hiker, hike. At the end of the day, you need to be out breaking a sweat. A lot of things that we go through, a lot of stress, the problems we're obsessing about might seem a little bit less when you're out on the road. If you're stressed or things are not moving, just take time out of your day. Wear your sneakers, go out, be one with nature. Just walk. You can listen to a podcast while you do this, or if there's a place that's beautiful, it's a park, just go there, listen to the sound of nature, and that will change your mind shift drastically. That's just something that I've tried to incorporate a lot more. Um, number three, hydration is very key. You need to focus in hydrating your body. I'm not even going to get into like the healthy eating and whatnot. Focus first on drinking lots of water. Sometimes we binge a lot of things. When our body is thirsty, it might come out to like, you need sugar. And then you just get a cupcake, a cookie or whatever. Or little do you know that you could have just drunk water and then that could have been satiated. So try and make a point to drink as much water as you can. It's helpful for your gut. It's helpful for your skin, for your nails, for your mental wellness and just stabilizing a lot of hormones in your body. That's number three. See, I told you today I'm keeping it cute and easy. Number four, this is something I've been quite conscious on doing and that is practicing gratitude. A lot of us are just going about life ungrateful. Some people go to work and they don't even say hello to their co-workers, which is neither here nor there, but that's just weird. Make a point to always say thank you. If you meet a stranger, smile. You do not know that little what that little smile will do to somebody else. Like take time and think of a day, maybe you were probably stressed and then somebody just comes and be like, oh, I like your hair or I like your smile. Or, hey, how are you? You look down today. Is there anything I can do to cheer you up? That way you're making somebody else's day better and it doesn't cost you anything. Don't let a day go by without you telling somebody thank you or you look nice or doing something that doesn't actually serve you with anything that's on an exterior side on an interior part of that every day that we are alive or every day that you know our head hits the pillow is a day to be thankful for so take time do gratitude journaling like i'm healthy i'm alive i'm successful all those things that they seem like too far-fetched we always have a reason to be thankful a lot of people don't make it to see the next day a lot of people are like are you know there's like war happening and you're alive there's a roof over your head yes you're going through something but it could have been worse and you have to be thankful it's not worse as it can be and i know what can be stressful and whatnot and we get to a point where like you hate your job but 
every time i get to that point i always take a step back count one two three breathe and then think of a time where i actually prayed for that job and now i have it and then that just stops me on my track i'm like wait i'm saying i hate this job but there was a point in time that i prayed for this job right and there's somebody out there praying for this particular opportunity that i have and then that just changes my entire mindset i hope that makes sense Another way to create habits to help you level up is to journal. There's a power in journaling, taking your thoughts into paper. If you're having ideas, if you're having, you know, points that you want to try and make, make a point to journal and write them down. Move your thoughts from your head to your pen. Whatever is going on, journaling can seem a bit daunting and it's hard for some people. You have to start small. You do not have to like write a book on your first day or month. Just Today I did one, two, three, and I'm happy. I'm grateful this and this happened. I faced this challenge, but I know my problems are not bigger than my faith or my God. Little things like that. Start with a line and then build into a sentence and then maybe a paragraph. Whatever that works for you. You can even find those journals that give you cues on what to write about. Maybe like five things that went well today or your when, why, and there are so many prompts that you can get to journal from. The goal here is to start. And these are tiny daily habits that can help you level up. The moment you take a lot of those like thoughts from your head to paper, if it was like a problem or whatever, it doesn't seem as big as it is in your head if you write it down. And as you write, sometimes solutions can come pouring out of there. Right. Another thing is time management. One of our biggest currencies is time. I know a lot of people say it's money yes but time time is the currency that is ever fleeting think about it every day that goes by you're getting close and closer to death that sounded morbid but it is the truth so time management is one thing that is going to help you level up part of your evening routine should encompass you planning what you're doing for the day have a to-do list as you are leaving your nine to five or you're ending your business day, plan what you're doing to work the next day. Don't just wake up and go about your day without having a, an idea of what your day is supposed to look like. Like if somebody says, let's meet tomorrow at 10, be sure to know like tomorrow at 10, there's nothing allocated there. When I had started working, it was super weird when I told people like, oh, let, let, let's meet tomorrow. I was like, oh, my, I'm busy. My calendar says something. I was like, oh, bougie. But then I quickly learned that your calendar or your time is your currency. You don't have to allow everybody to have access to you and have designated time next to whatever you're trying to allocate. So I'm going to the gym, let's say at 6.30 to like 8. That's my gym time. And then I'll get ready and leave or drive to work 8.30. And then I'll have a team meeting between 9 and 9.15 probably between 10 to like one i block those three hours for heavy thinking or heavy work that i need to do for the day so that could be writing technical proposals that could be budgeting that could be anything that is related to my day have a to-do list time block and break your your activities anything that requires a lot of your mind or thinking the heavy thinking in your to-do list make sure that's prioritized in the very early part of your day when you're the most active and then the mundane tasks that you're dreading or whatever those can go in the evening they're they're dreading because they don't need a lot of mental capacity not because you do not want to do them and then practice time blocking any task that goes to your to-do list has to have a certain time of start and when you estimate to finish it just don't say uh meetings like ever ending that will not help you another daily habit that has helped me level up for the longest time is to mute the notifications on my phone especially with the new upgrade where it allows you to be notified about one two three and i'm always like no when i leave work i want work to stay at work and then when i come home i want to be fully at home and one of the things that i did was to remove my work email on my phone this goes to my nine to five my business email that's all on my laptop i want to read my emails on my laptop it reached to a point that i'll be in a meeting or i'll be doing whatever i'm doing at home just relaxing on my phone and then i'll see like an email Email notification what that does to my head i have no self-control i'll just read the title and then i'll be like oh this is so and so so and so would need one two three so i start working in the back end 
I'm at home, mind you, but I'll start working in the back end because that email just called for one, two, three. And I know that's just me. I have no self-control. So the notification for me is a distraction and I just decided to remove them. If I want to be notified about, let's say, a post on Instagram, I want to go into Instagram knowing that I'm going on to Instagram. I can use the 10 minutes scrolling and I know I'll get to a destination and I'll be forced to step out of the social media thing. Same thing with TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I'm not even on Snapchat. It's been ages. WhatsApp is the one that even pisses me the most because this is a lot happening while on the same note of you know muting your notification limit your screen time it's insane the amount of time we spend on device and for me it got to a problem like i'll be on my ipad then i'll jump on my phone then be on the laptop or i can have all of them running simultaneously i don't know who said this from a content creation perspective but it gave me such an aha moment the conversation was create more content than you consume and i was doing the opposite i was consuming more than i was creating and that gave me like time to step back and create more content or be conscious of what i'm consuming as much as i want people to consume my content i don't want them to consume them all the time take time for yourself take time to breathe go outside and touch the grass point number nine rest take rest as a requirement not as a privilege when it's time for you to rest rest part of that includes eight hours of sleep prioritize sleeping the things that your body needs to be you know super functional without uh, additional medication will be sleep movement and water you need eight hours of sleep to be a functioning adult you can't be productive or you can't level up if you're sleepy or you're tired and you're groggy throughout the day your moods are dependent on the amount of sleep you get sometimes you're angry and cocky and loud in the morning is because you lacked sleep your body is still <laughs> things have not balanced in your head so try and focus on a lot of sleep whenever you can please sleep sleep is not a privilege sleep is actually part and parcel of your operations as a human being we had mentioned this in episode eight about the habit stacking all these things if you're not doing them on a daily basis you can start small by habit stacking if you're showering at night add in skincare let's say you started walking make a plan to call your mother so habit stack those things so it's easier for you to add new things into your daily routine it's more palatable to add a new thing on an, an existing routine don't try and reinvent the wheel find some that is similar or in close proximity to whatever you're trying to add in and then bundle them up together that's what it's called habit stacking habit number 10 consume productive content so this could be reading productive book this could be listening to productive podcasts this could be taking online courses or attending workshop whatever you're doing try and fuel your mind with like productive positive content the same time that you use it to you know like indulge in content on social media that same time could be allocated to the betterment of yourself if you're trying to be an entrepreneur take time to learn more one of the goals that i'm trying to do this year is to you know be a cinematographer or jump into cinematography so i've taken time to like learn and, and understand and if you look back even to the videos that i've been producing this year alone you can see the changes if you have watched my new york vlog that's kind of where the turning point began so read as much as you can try and make a point to read at least a book a month the same energy used to like binge watch a season of bridgerton learn about your craft harness your craft do something that's gonna take you a uh, one percent better tomorrow if you're looking to read i have a suggestion of books for you to read you can read the atomic habit there is the 12 week year there is start with why there is the power of your subconscious mind there's 101 s's that will change your mind there is uh the mountain is you and if you can't read try and even get the summary of it and then the last book which i read is the five second rule by mel gibson this is also something that i'll give you like an ending remark whatever you're trying to do if you're thinking to like oh i should get out of instagram count one two three four five and get out like give it five seconds and before the five seconds are out leave it if you hear your alarm in the morning when it's ringing there's a five second before your brain just decides to like make you live in safety 
for you safety will be like i could sleep some more don't go beyond 5 seconds without doing it cuz by the time you do it then your mind has caught up with your subconscious and then you know it can make you like um let's just stay inside it's warm let's not go outside to run it's raining before you know it it's been 2 years since you last ran whatever you're trying to do try and, and embed it with the 5 second rule and it will move you farther I hope you guys did enjoy this. I tried to make it soft, sweet, and the goal is to be a better version of ourselves. And as I'd mentioned, I'm pretty sure you knew all of these things, but there's a difference between knowing and doing, and I'm trying to like remind you that you know these things and it's time for us to do them. It's not too late. If you think that it's time for a change, then go ahead and change yourself. And that's all I have for you, folks. Thank you so much for following along. I had an amazing time creating this. I hope you found this episode useful. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you have comments, questions, concerns or topic suggestions, please leave them in the description box below. And I'll see all of your beautiful faces on the next one. Mwah. Bye.